this stuff is growing in real well. Very good. Sound. There's real satisfaction and it makes you think more largely than your little cell and your little fenced in area that you live in. From a security standpoint, I see that it keeps them busy and they're a lot happier and they get along better. All of this work provides inmates with an opportunity to contribute to something larger than themselves, but it also provides an opportunity to do something meaningful for the environment. I think hitting the five-year anniversary of this Sustainability in Prison project is, is significant for a lot of different reasons, but I guess first and foremost is the fact that it has lasted that long, you know, that we've been able to continue on with this project despite economic downturns and challenges in, in state and government um, funding. Um, part of the reason, though, I, I think that was that we were able to just continue to move forward is, is one, the, the project was thoughtful and people saw the benefits. And, and second to that is certainly between the years 2005 and 2010, it offered about a $3.5 million cost avoidance for the department. So above and beyond just good corrections work, it, it also provided inefficiency for us. The Sustainability in Prisons Project is a partnership between the Evergreen State College and the Washington State Department of Corrections. Um, this is a really unique partnership in that it brings together corrections professionals um, with faculty, staff, and students at a college. We work together to develop innovative projects that can be implemented in prisons um, to provide meaningful work for, for incarcerated men and women um, and to provide meaningful work for um, students and faculty um, at these colleges. On the one hand, we wanted to work with living things because there is a, certainly a proven therapeutic value to doing things like gardening or, or certainly dog training. So, so the basic principle to us was a, working with living things, and B, how do we provide some sort of service to the community? How do we provide something that's of a restoration quality? So, you know, although you start, you know, kind of in the center on that environmental twist and the money-saving twist or aspect of it, it's not long before you want to do things that contribute to the community and bring in community members that begin to look at, begin to see the institution as a resource. When we first started this project, there was a lot of skepticism. Nobody really thought that inmates were capable of doing the work that they, that they really have proven they can do, and to, to a, an amazing degree. Um, I think inmates have proven to be much more careful and meticulous. Um, they work very, very hard. They're engaged in a way that, that we're not able to because of all of the distractions of day-to-day -day life. Today, you would see evidence of sustainable practices in every prison we operate. You'll see dog programs in all 12 prisons. You'll see recycling efforts. You'll see organic gardening in many. And of course, we have at least three endangered species projects in the Oregon spotted frog, the Taylor checker spot butterfly, and then prairie plant restoration. And this is our prairie restoration project that we're in the middle of our fifth year of doing. It's been uh, very successful at, uh, towards restoring glacial prairies in western Washington. Uh, there used to be about 200,000 acres of glacial prairie and now there's like less than 2,000 and Joint Base Lewis McCord has in, within its boundaries uh, more than half of that. We've been working really hard with biologists on the military base um, to raise prairie plants in prisons to be restored on these prairies, to raise butterflies that are dependent on these prairie plants to be released on the prairies, and also to raise Oregon spotted frogs, which, um, which of course aren't a prairie species, but um, are also being released on the base in a large wetland complex. Will we ever double the amount of prairie uh, habitat that we have? I doubt it, but I think we can preserve what's left. And yeah, so I, just knowing all of that and having something productive to do while being in prison that, you know, makes a difference on the other side is, you know, it makes for some connectivity, you know, between here and there. And I feel good, like I'm giving back to the community with my job because I'm helping out a species that needs help. I'm actually working on something that's bigger and I'm giving back to the community something that, you know, and I've always been taken away from the community all these years, so it's nice to be able to give something back. I've always kind of thought plants were analogized as a great way to teach somebody that may not understand much about life how to care for something. It's got a perfect life cycle to it. Uh, a seed, um, a plant, a flower, um, the end of the season, death, wh whatever that cycle is, these guys have to understand that it, it all relates. And, and those plants are a great way to teach them something that they may not have had before, this, this accountability to a life form or to, to something bigger than themselves.
When you bring nature in inside a prison, it allows for engagement with other life forms. And so people are able to, they're able to watch the growth of a plant. They might be working with a dog and they might be undergoing that transformative process with, um, with a canine um, partner. <laughs> Across the United States and the world, there are more and more programs bringing canines into prisons. Some of the dog programs here in Washington State are just for adoptable dogs. And so they take dogs who were on the euthanized list at a shelter, they bring them into prisons to be rehabilitated and socialized, and then they go out for adoption to families nearby. Other programs, though, in prisons are much more complicated and involve um, the, the long-term training of a dog to be a service animal. I am serving a life sentence uh, under the Three Strikes uh, initiative, and uh, pretty much uh, my outlook was bleak until this program came along and uh, gave me a whole new uh, insight of what I'm to do here in this, in this life, I guess. And uh, to help these dogs get a second chance of life too is, uh, is the big factor and the big uh, benefit of the whole program. The biggest thing for the offenders I think is important to remember is they'll sit there and say it's a second chance for the dogs, but really for them, um, they have an opportunity to give back, to learn how to love, to take care of, and responsibility is probably number one. Where these guys never knew what responsibility was in the past and what got them here, now they have to learn responsibility all over again. <laughs> this is my third one, like I said, and the first one I cried like a baby when I gave her away. Didn't mean to, I was supposed to be a tough guy, right? No, it didn't happen, I cried like a baby. You know, it helps you develop empathy and a moral compass, so to speak, because you have to strive for something better other than yourself. When you're able to play with these dogs, you, you have to hold a higher standard. You have to walk your talk, you know? You have to be, be somebody more important than just another inmate, just another person who's willing to throw it all away for, for somebody's actions. Hopefully someday if we make it back out there, we're able, to, uh, we're able to prove to society that we're not the same exact individuals that came to prison. Stabbing Creek Cracking Center produces around 2,500 pounds of food waste every day. That food waste traditionally went to a landfill. That landfill buried it in the ground and we paid them about $130 a ton. About four years ago, we finished this building, which allows us to handle all that food here. We compost it in a drum. It rotates in the drum for about three days and then comes out and sits in static piles. At the end of the process is about five weeks. It results in a, the, the, the product you're looking at, which is maybe two yards per week of finished product. The cost savings associated with it, obviously at, at uh, about 500 tons a year, that combined with the recycle center and the, and the, the other 400 tons that we save down there, it's somewhere around $200,000 that we're saving by not sending this stuff to the landfill. All this is fresh. See how we cut? We cut it to where we have, we leave about an inch or two. We have a system where we have gardens growing food for the kitchen. So the kitchen then prepares the food, including some of the produce from the gardens. At the same time, any kitchen waste, either at preparation or at post-consumption, um, go goes into the composting system. The composting program then here at Cedar Creek takes the food waste and turns it through a various you know, numbers of stages back into really rich right soil here? that then goes back into the garden beds. And so that helps to close like the loop dirt. partly. Like we reuse everything from the wood chips, from the compost center, to the food waste in the kitchen, we reuse everything. Nothing goes to waste, not even the water. You learn a lot from it, you know what I mean? You take, you take home a lot. Not only is this information and knowledge that we get beneficial for the environment, but it's also beneficial for our lives. You know what I mean? So we can take this information back and grow our own gardens or go out there and get a job in the green economy and, and you know, be able to help, back, help out and produce and give back to society in a positive and productive way. It's a great program that, to keep people out of trouble. And our instructor got teacher of the year and I just think that I would be so humiliated if I did get in trouble. You know, I would just it would uh, you know just be hard knowing that I disappointed our instructors. It really does get you to respect things. It puts things in perspective because they're quite fragile, but yet they're also very resilient. This is a big reflection on what I'm doing with my time and how it's changed my perspective is because I need to focus on trying to better my life and give back to the community instead of going out there and just uh, ruining my life more. I got incarcerated at uh, 16 years old and this program has actually given me a way of to learn responsibility. You know, if I don't, if I'm not responsible for 
myself and, you know, these animals, they will die. You know, so it teaches me good work ethic and how to communicate with society before I actually am released. Get in there then, Missy. Go. A lot of these guys come from very rough backgrounds. Um, what brought them to prison sometimes um, has been very hard, hard times. We've now seen these guys, the guys that are in the program, remaining in fraction free, staying out of trouble, doing things the way they're supposed to be doing them. I would say the largest benefit, of course, is having meaningful employments for, for the offender population and beginning to recast an institution from you know, a dark place behind a big fence where it's kind of mysterious to the public to the point in which you're bringing in the public and they're seeing us, they're seeing a prison as an area that can contribute to local needs. Eventually I think you begin to redesign prisons in order to support not, not only the efficiency in the sense of energy and waste and water but also in the sense of how you engage offenders. So you know, you see more prisons designed to have gardens on the inside or that they're built with composting centers or, or garbage sorting centers or they have areas for dog training or, or bicycle repair. Um, at some point, I think you're going to find prisons that are a hub of biodiversity for that region or area. I think Washington has done a really good job of, of engaging the project and I've been really pleased that we've been able to stay the course. It has proven to be valuable from a partnership standpoint, um, whether it be scientific research, whether it's ecological restoration, and certainly reducing negative behavior on the, the part of the offender population. So I think it really has been a win-win-win um, for all partners involved. And when you can get that kind of formula, I mean, it's kind of fun to do.